on today's episode, we talk about the risks of not having a will, the key differences of lasting power of attorney, and just why these documents are so crucial for landlords, with our special guest, Managing Director of Heritage Wills, Stuart Barrow. It's really great to have you on today, as today's episode is a little bit different, as we usually talk about the private rented sector. But today we're talking about two things that might not be at the forefront of everyone's mind, and that's writing a will and drafting a lasting power of attorney, or commonly known as um, an LPA. And um, you are, of course, as I said in my introduction, the managing director of Heritage Wills, the leading dedicated will writers in East Anglia. And you serve uh, thousands of clients across East Anglia, but also across the country too. So it would just be really nice to go back a little bit in time and hear from yourself how Heritage Wills all started. How did it all come about? Oh, great. Yeah. I mean, so Heritage Halls was um, originally formed back in 2002. Uh, so over 20, we've got over 20 years of experience now in the industry. Um, it was initially formed from um, three companies that merged to form the entity that is now Heritage Wills. Um, myself, I've been involved in Heritage Wills since 2013. Uh, prior to that, I was their external accountant. So I came on board in 2013 as their finance director. Um, and back at the very end of 2019, I took on the role of managing director um, at Heritage Wills, just in time for an unprecedented global pandemic. So uh, in, at, in at the deep end. In at the deep end, indeed. And that must have been, I mean, quite a sort of, you know, you come straight in and then there's a global pandemic. How did you kind of deal with that? Was that quite difficult, I imagine? Um, yeah, it certainly had its challenges, but it actually allowed us to... Um, to adapt and work in a more efficient manner, um, which has actually benefited both the company and our client base. Interesting to hear you saying about, obviously, I know COVID did have its challenges, but you obviously, you seem to have adapted and it seems to have benefited your client base. So how did you guys adapt during COVID? Was it mainly, I mean, obviously everything became online. So was it sort of video calls and that sort of thing? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the well, almost all of our appointments exclusively became video calls, be it via platforms like Teams and Zoom, um, Skype, even WhatsApp video calls. Um, you know, I mean, the, the most important thing was that the, the situation with COVID sort of forced the general public to adopt these things as well. Um, so that that cut out a little bit of a little bit of a battle element for us, um, and it enabled the whole thing to be really quite a smooth process. That's really great to hear how it became a smooth process, and as well, I know Heritage Wills does a lot of charity work, in particular with an emphasis on local charities in East Anglia as well. So can you just explain a little bit how you work with charities and some of the charities that you work with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we ask people uh, within the office um, to put forward charities that are close to their hearts because we want to be involved in things that are going to make a difference to to uh, people here. Um, we historically we've worked with East Anglia and Air Ambulance, um, a, a Nelson's Journey, which is a child bereavement service. Um, we're currently working with a local charity called Headway, which is. Uh, a charity that's um, raising uh, raising funds and awareness for people that have suffered from a brain injury, um, either through accident or illness. Um, but that one's quite sort of close to our hearts at the moment. Oh, well, that's really lovely to hear. And how long have you worked with some of these charities for? I know you're saying one's called Nelson's Journey. How long have you worked with that one for? Um, well, what, what we tend to do is we tend to pick a charity of the year um, and then we will have a charity and events team, which will put on various events throughout the year um, in terms of um, there will be quiz nights, there'll be um, potentially disco bingo, um, you know, a, a fun events that we can interact with, um, with you know, friends, families, staff, clients, um, a, anyone that wants to be involved that can you know, raise money for good causes. Um, so, like I say, people put for people uh, here put forward uh, proposals, and then we sort of pick one that we think we can work with, and is and is importantly synergistic with our business as well. 
Exactly. And they sound like really, really great events as well. And I know you guys sponsor the local rugby club. So that's amazing as well. Yeah, we do. Um, I sort of wear two hats on that front because I'm also the chairman at Norwich Rugby Club. Um, but yeah, we're also one of their principal sponsors. Um, yeah, rugby is something I've always been very passionate about. It's given me a lot in life um, and it's our chance to uh, engage with the community as well. Yeah, that's lovely, engaging with the community. How long have you all sponsored the local rugby club for? Yeah, How long have you... We're probably six, seven years we've sponsored. We've been one of their principal sponsors now. Yeah, that, I think that's probably a long-term relationship that will continue as well. It's, it's sort of, it works nicely for us. Yeah. It does. Sounds like it. And I bet some good rugby matches as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can have, it's a wonderful day on a Saturday. Um, yeah, a pre-match lunch in the game. So it's, it's a nice way to spend the day. It's really great to hear. And I know since you've established in 2002, you've won numerous awards since then. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we've won um, we've won World Writing Organisation of the Year um, a couple of regional times, a couple of local times and a couple of national awards as well for the, for the same thing. So, yeah, we're very proud of that, actually. Yeah. That's great. Well, congratulations. That's really amazing to hear. And obviously, since you've been established, you've worked with Property 118 for a number of years now. So I was just wondering if you could tell our viewers um, just why is it so important for landlords in particular to have wills and LPAs in place? Yeah, sure. Um, if I could just take an initial step back, because a lot of the a lot of the advice is um, is relevant to everyone and certainly landlords as well. Um, so if I look at sort of how we would initially work with people and how we, uh, how our process of writing a will works, we would initially book an appointment um, at the potential client's convenience, either virtually or face-to-face, -face, depending on where they live. Um, and we will cover all of the client's circumstances, we'll include mapping out a family tree, uh, will it ascertain the extent of their estate? Um, and then we will ask the client what they're hoping to achieve um, before bespokely tailoring our advice to uh, present them with the suitable options, allowing them to make an informed decision. Um, specific to landlords, um, one, of, one of the trigger points in life is um, for, that we find for people to make a will is the acquisition of property or assets. Um, as well as, you know, other trigger points in their lives like marriage and divorce and having children. Um, but certainly with um, regards to property, that's, that's, often, that's often people's biggest assets. So it's very important to ensure that goes where, where they want it to. Definitely. I agree with that as well as you're saying. Property is a big, big uh, topic within that. And I mean, in particular, how does Heritage Wills work with Property 118 smart company clients? Can you just explain briefly a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, so we'll offer the same um, full bespoke consultation. Um, and in addition to this, uh, we will then look to um, put their, the growth shares from their smart companies into a discretionary trust, which is held on behalf of their beneficiaries. Um, and we'll obviously then register the, the trust with HMRC in accordance to make sure they're compliant. So that's really great to hear, uh, particularly with what you were talking about with Property 118 smart company structure clients. I'm sure they'll find that very, very helpful. And one of the questions I really wanted to ask you was that you see online that you can draft your wills in 15 minutes. And some people might look at that, might look at that and think, oh, that seems really quick and easy. I'll do that. But of course, that isn't drafted by a solicitor, so it does come with risks. So can you explain the benefits um, of having a professionally drafted will? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, the biggest benefit to having a professionally drafted will is it, it does actually ensure that your wishes are adhered to. Um, if you draft it yourself, um, any, any small failure to follow all the legal requirements required uh, could easily invalidate the will um, as well as lead to potential claims and challenges against your estate. 
Exactly, definitely. And as you were saying there, because it's not regulated, so it does come with risks as well. And when I was doing um, some research about wills, I was really interested that I found um, a piece that said that according to moneysupermarket.com, 52% of people either don't have a will or have an outdated one. And I was quite surprised by that, as 52% is actually quite a large amount. That's more than half. So, I mean, firstly, what happens if you die without a will? What are the consequences of that? Um, well, I mean, put quite simply, if you die without a, without a will, you don't get a say in how your estate is distributed, uh, where mm. your assets are left. They, uh, they would follow something called the laws of intestacy. So it's a predetermined way of... Um, distributing your estate, um, you, which in many, many cases is not what people would choose. Um, beyond that, if the laws of intestacy fail, uh, the money would go straight to the government. So um, very important to, to make sure you have a last will and testament. Uh, as you say, 52% is an incredibly high number of people that don't have one. But um, I always think it comes down to Making a will and dieting are the two easiest things to put off in life for uh, for many people. Exactly, definitely. And yeah, as I was like when I was researching it, 52% is a really, really big amount. I was quite surprised by that. And um, can heritage wills update an existing will as well? Do you guys offer that? We do, absolutely. And in fact, as you said in your previous question, it's just as important to have an up-to-date mm -hmm. will as it is to have one initially. Um, just to make sure your wishes are still current because we all know our lives change on a regular basis the circumstances in which we live altering all the time so it's very important to have them up to date um, we offer a product called a client care package uh, which is a small annual fee um, we store the documents securely to make sure they're always valid uh, and additionally to that we offer um, as many amendments as required um, to people's wills to make sure they're always current and up to date. That's really helpful to hear, especially with the client care package as well. I think that would be incredibly, incredibly helpful uh, for people. And if we can move on to lasting power of attorney now, um, if you could just firstly briefly explain for those that don't know what lasting power of attorney is, could you just explain um, a little bit briefly about what it is? Uh, yes, absolutely. So a last empire of attorney is um, a document where you as the donor grant someone else permission to act on your behalf during your lifetime if you become incapacitated for any reason, such as illness or accident, or maybe you are just required some assistance. Perfect. Thank you. And so how does the process of setting up an LPA with Heritage Wheels work? Um, it works. So to set up an LPA, we will explain in detail what an LPA is to the client, uh, how it works, the role that the attorney will play. Um, we will also act as certificate provider, uh, which is a person who officially signs the documents, confirming that the donor understands the purpose and scope of the LPA um, and that there is no fraud or undue pressure to complete the documents. Very helpful indeed. And what types of LPA do you offer? Because I understand there's, is there sort of two different ones? There are two different ones, yes. Yeah. We offer um, a health and welfare and a property and financial. Um, the two biggest differences, they cover different areas, but a health and welfare can only be used after somebody has lost capacity. Um, and the health and welfare one allows you to make life-sustaining treatment decisions, medical decisions, right down to care home, dressing, bathing, eating. Um, but as I say, that can only be used if you've already lost capacity. The property and financial one allows you to um, assist with managing bank accounts, paying bills um, and things of that nature. And that can actually be used before you've lost capacity. So, a classic example of this would be we saw a huge spike in um, property and financial LPAs from the elderly during COVID because they still had capacity, but a lot of them were on the vulnerable list, so were locked up at home, but required assistance um, from others. So that we saw a big spike in those during during lockdown one in particular. 
That's really interesting to hear, especially during with COVID as well, as you were saying, the spike um, in LPAs as well. And um, going, yes, if I could it's just... It's just to get one other thing, actually, as well. Yeah, uh, maybe go for more it. To the, um, to the smart company clients of Property 118, um, and that is there is an additional type of blast and power of attorney for property influential. It's the same one, but we will often recommend um, multiple versions of the same document with differing powers. So, because often people will have their spouses to manage their finances and things like that, but they may require a business partner to be able to manage, make business decisions for them. So you can specify the scope of the work and nature um, on that same document. So having multiple versions of it for different things is often beneficial. That's really helpful. Uh, thank you for that. And I mean, what happens if someone loses mental capacity without having an LPA in place? Because I imagine that's obviously huge, huge consequences with that. Yeah, absolutely. So that either there will be a court appointed deputy to step in, um, or if there is a family member that wishes to take on that role, they will have to apply to the Court of Protection for a deputyship. Um, sadly, a process that is time consuming and expensive. Um, and it comes at a time where the last thing you need to the last, the last thing you need is a, del a time delay. Exactly, as you were saying there, yeah, the expensive and the time delay as well. And I wasn't too sure, um, I was going to ask you, but I mean, from your line of work, have you actually seen, as we've been touching on there, if you don't have a will in place or if you don't have an LPA, I mean, just how bad actually is it if you don't actually have these things in place? Have you seen from your line of work people that don't have these things in place and obviously the bad consequences that can happen? Absolutely. We've um, many, many times we've been approached by people asking if we could help them um, after somebody has passed away without a will. And unfortunately, at that point, it is just too late. There isn't anything anyone can do at that stage. Um, yeah. So the, the consequences, the consequences can be unpleasant for people. And, you know, the, the message has to be get your affairs in order, really. Definitely. Thank you so much for that, because as we've been touching throughout the interview, it's just peace of mind at the end of the day, really, isn't it? it? And with Heritage Wills, it seems like such a such a seamless process. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely what we strive for. As you say, we, we try to make it um, what can be a difficult and emotive topic for people as simple and as straightforward as possible for them. That's perfect. And I think that's the perfect way to end the interview as well. So thank you so much, Stuart. Really interesting uh, to talk to you today and talk about wills and LPAs. As, as we were saying, it's not at the forefront of everyone's mind, but they are incredibly important. So thank you for joining us today, Stuart. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure.